Hello Noel students and welcome to the 2020-2021 school year. Welcome to the math pre-work videos. I'm Mr. Mullen and I'll be teaching Algebra 2 and Algebra 1 this year and in a later video you're going to see Mr. Saji. He's going to be teaching the geometry classes this year. There are eight topics that we're going to include in the math pre-work. That's going to account to four videos. It's important to know these eight topics before we begin the courses because they're considered essential skills for success in algebra and geometry. So we want to make sure that you understand those. Here are the eight topics. If at any time during the pre-work videos you do not understand one of these topics, please come to office hours, either Mr. Saji's office hours or my office hours, so that we can get you proficient on these skills. So without further ado, let's start our first topic. Our first topic is Base 10 Operations. So our number system is considered base 10. And there's a reason why they call it base 10. There are 10 numerals in our number system. Perhaps they're familiar. And with these 10 numerals, you can make any number in our number system. And what we can do, because of this 10, this 10 is a magic number, we can use the power of base 10 operations to do mental math. So we're going to start with addition and subtraction. An important thing to remember with addition and subtraction is how positive and negatives play a role in addition and subtraction. So let's start by reviewing the signs. Here are all the combinations that you can add and subtract with. First, we have two positive numbers. When we have two positive numbers, we are going to add. So this will become our add column. The same can be said for two negative numbers. If you have two negative numbers, you will also add. When you, when you are done adding, you will get a result. If you add two positive numbers, you will result in a positive answer. If you add two negative numbers, you will result in a negative number. easy to remember. Our other combinations are if we have a positive number and a negative number or a negative number and a positive number. When you see that you have a positive number and a negative number, we're going to subtract. This will become our subtract column. When you're done subtracting, you're going to look for the number that is larger. If the larger number is, was positive, then your answer will be positive. If the larger number was negative, then you will have a negative answer. Let's try an example. So let's look to do 62 plus 77. First of all, we have to look. Do we have positive, positive, negative, positive, or negative, negative? I look here and I have a plus 77. That means I have that 77 is a positive number. 
Now I'm looking over here at 62 and I don't see a sign. When you don't see a sign, we assume positive. Okay, now let's go back to that base 10, right? Look, the, that trick to solving addition and subtraction mentally. The key to solving mental math is to rewrite problems in factors of 10. So I can rewrite positive 62 as 60 plus 2. And again, we have two positive numbers, so we are going to add. And I can rewrite 77 as 70 plus 7. We have broken our components into tens and ones. We can now add 6 plus 7 is 13. Each of them had one zero, so I add one zero to the end. Now I go to the ones column. Plus 2 plus 7 is 9. And then a little mental math will give me 130 plus 9 is 139. Let's try a harder example. If I have 356 plus 299, first things first, let's look at our signs. I have a plus 299. That's a positive 299. Then I look here, 356, no sign. So I'm going to assume positive. Now let's, re let's rewrite these as factors of 10. So I first can break this up into 300 plus 50 plus 6 plus, because we have two positive numbers, 200 plus 90 plus 9. Now all we have to do is add hundreds with hundreds, tens with tens, ones with ones. So I'm going to start with the hundreds. 3 plus 2 is 5. I have two zeros on each. I'm going to add two zeros to my answer. Let's go to the let's go to the tens. Nine plus five is fourteen. Nine plus five. Each of them has one zero. I'm going to add one zero. And lastly, let's go to the ones place. Nine plus six is fifteen. Okay. Now comes the mental math, right? Well, I have 500 plus 100 is 600. 600 plus 40 is 640. 640 plus 10 is 650. And 650 plus 5 is 655. So you're probably saying to yourself, that's great, Mr. Mullen. Addition, I get addition. Addition is easy. Let's try some subtraction. So let's take a look. Let's try 96 minus 108. First things first is you have to look at your signs. I have a negative 108. Like, okay, one negative. Then I look at 96. There's no sign in front of 96. I'm going to assume it's positive. All right, a positive and a negative, we're going to subtract. So let's, let's rewrite our numbers using base 10. So first I have 90 plus 6. Then I have a subtraction, because we subtract opposite signs. Then I'm going to rewrite 108 to be 100 plus 8. This is the difference between addition and subtraction. If you think back to middle school, you learn something called the distributive property. And all that means is that this negative has to be applied to both of these numbers. And that is just a fancy way of saying that we have to change each sign in this second parentheses. So I have no sign in front of 100. So I have to assume it's positive, right? So instead of positive 100, positive 8, 
I'm going to rewrite this to be negative 100 and negative 8. So I have 90 plus 6 minus negative 100, negative 8. And now I just combine my hundreds, tens, and ones. First things first, let's take a look at the problem. And we only have one hundred. We only have one ten. So let's write those below. Next, we look at the ones place, and I can see that I have a positive six and a negative eight. Those are opposite signs, so we're going to subtract. Eight minus six is two. I can see that 8 is the larger number, therefore I am going to get a negative 2. Now on the next row, I have negative 100 and positive 90. Those are opposite signs, so I am going to subtract. 100 minus 90 is 10. 100 is the bigger number. Therefore, it is going to be negative 10. Next, I have negative 10 and a negative 2. I have two negative numbers. Therefore, I'm going to add 10 plus 2 is 12. And finally, I look at the sign negative 10, negative 2, two negative signs, and the answer is going to be negative, so the answer is negative 12. For our last problem, let's try negative 33 minus 84. You can see here that we have two negative numbers. When we have two negative numbers, we are going to add the numbers and the result will be negative. I'm going to start by putting a negative sign out front and then I'm going to simply add the two numbers. I can break 33 up into 30 plus 3. With two negatives, we're going to add, so I'm going to put an addition sign. And I can break 84 into 80 plus 4. Let's add up the tens place. 8 plus 3 is 11, and I'm going to add 1 0 to make 1 10. And in the ones place, 4 plus 3 is 7. Notice how I bring down the negative to each row. This will be important in algebra as you do not want to drop a sign. In the last step, we're going to use mental math to add 110 and 7, which is 117. The negative sign comes down to make it negative 117. Hi, this is Saji. Today we're going to learn multiplication. Let's see what is multiplication. It's basically repeated addition. For example, if you have 3 times 2, that means you are adding 3 twice, which is equal to 6. But if we have 3 times 20, we have to add 20 times, which is kind of too long. Instead of that, we just going to multiply. We follow the multiplication rule, and then we will get the answer in a simple way and faster way. Now, we should know the rules of multiplication. The rules of multiplication is if you have a positive number times another positive number, you're going to be end up with a positive number. If you have a positive number multiplied with a negative number, you're going to end up with negative number. If you have a negative number times a positive number, 
you're going to end up with a negative number. If you have a negative number times another negative number, you're going to end up with a positive number. You should know these rules. The easy way to remember, look at here. These two. If you have same sign multiplying, then you will end up with positive number. Positive times positive, it's positive. Negative times negative, it's negative. If you have different signs, then you will end up with a negative number. If you can, memorize it or look at the pattern and try to keep in your mind because this is very important when you multiply positive and negative number together. For an example, if you have sixty-two times eight, how do we do it? Like Mr. Ryan said, we can write sixty-two into sixty plus two times eight. Now you're going to distribute this eight into each number in the parenthesis. Now we're going to multiply eight times zero is zero. Eight times six is forty-eight. Plus eight times two is sixteen. Now you can write this into four hundred plus eighty plus ten plus six, which is equal to sixteen. Now you have hundreds, tens, and ones. There's only one hundreds, which is four hundred. We just leave that. Now we have two tens. So we're going to combine that, which is going to be ninety. And we have only ones, which is six. We're just going to put that six. Now it's a simple math. Four hundred plus ninety is four ninety. Plus six is four ninety six. One. 37, which is a three digit number, 137 times 7. How are we going to do it? Same way, we're just going to write this in a parenthesis 100 plus 30 plus 7 times 7. Same thing we're going to do, distribute the 7 to every single number in the parenthesis. Now, 7 times 100, or you can say 7 times 0 is 0, 7 times 0 is 0, 7 times 1, it's going to be 7, plus 7 times 0 is 0. 7 times 3, it's going to be 21, which is 210, plus 7 times 7 is 49. Now, we're going to write this into 700, plus, instead of 210, we're going to write 200, plus 10. Instead of 49, we're going to write 40 plus 9. We have 700 plus 200, which is 900. We have 
10 and 40, so we're just going to write 50 plus 9, which is equal to 900 plus 50 is 950, 959. That's the answer. Let's say you have 54 times negative 9 just look at this this one has a sign negative this one doesn't have it if you don't have any sign in front of a number that's mean it's a positive number so I'm just gonna put a little positive sign If you look at the chart, the rules of multiplication, positive times negative, it's going to be negative. I'm just going to write that negative in here. Now, I'm going to put in the parenthesis, instead of 54, I'm going to put 50 plus 4, which is equal to 54, times... 9, we already multiplied the sign and we get the negative sign. So now we're just going to put the 9 itself. You already know, we're just going to distribute the 9. In the meantime, we're going to carry the sign, which is negative. Now let's see, 9 times 0 is 0. 9 times 5 is 45. 9 times 4 is 36. We don't need basically, I mean now we need the parenthesis because we are just keeping the sign for now. Now, we can write 450 into 400 plus 50. 36, we're going to write 30 plus 6. Now we have only 100s, so I'm just going to write that 100s in here, which is 400. We have two 10s. We're going to combine these two. When we combine 50 plus 30, it's going to be 80. And we have only 1s, which is 6. We're just going to write that 6 in here. Now, pretty simple. 400 plus 80 is 480, plus 6 is 486. So, we just keep the sign, negative sign, and we're going to write 486. That's how you do it. With two negative numbers. Negative numbers, two negative numbers multiplying. So, let's say negative 106 times negative 6. How we do it? Same thing. We have the rule already, the multiplication rule. When we multiply negative times negative, it's going to be positive. I'm just going to write the sign. Then we don't need to deal with the sign now. We just have to multiply. So I'm going to put the parenthesis. I'm going to write 106 into 100 plus 6 times we already multiplied the sign so we already put it we don't need to put any sign now we keep the sign until the end now we're going to do the distribution 6 times 100 which is 600 or you can go 6 times 0 is 0, 6 times 0 is 0, and 6 times 1 is 6, so it's going to be 600. Plus 6 times 6, it's going to be 36. Now, you can just say it's 636, or if you want to go one more step, 
you can say 600 plus 30 plus 6, it's the same thing. 600 plus 30 is 630, 636. If you have any question, please come to my office hours or send me an email. We can make an arrangement. Thank you.